Hi everybody, these are the video notes for the context of the section of Revelation that we're going to be looking at in our cell meetings today. Some of you prefer to watch and to listen to the context, others prefer to read them. You can get the written form from your cell group leader. We're looking at the book of Revelation in this season and we come to the final two chapters, chapter 21 and 22. Just to remind you of the core message of the book of Revelation is that Christ is victorious. And the key verses in Revelation 17 verse 14. They will make war on the Lamb and the Lamb will conquer them. For He is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And those with Him are called and chosen and faithful. The book of Revelation, if you remember, was a book of encouragement, a prophecy of encouragement and comfort for the church in a season of intense persecution of isolation of hardship and of trials john was imprisoned on the island of patmos and there he received this revelation which he directed towards people who were struggling in that time and many of them were wanting to give up their faith as god opened up this apocalypse this uncovering so john was able to share this message of encouragement and faith for people to endure during this period uh, as well, and just to review the the four sections, we divided the book into four overview sections. The first section was chapters one to three, and this is the first thing that John saw in his revelation. And the message that he brought was that the church has not been abandoned by God during hardship. The Spirit reveals Jesus moving amongst His people, moving amongst the churches, encouraging them and correcting them. Then we moved on to a big section from chapters four to sixteen. And in the second section of what John saw, we see God still on the throne in all his goodness and his glory. We see that in chapter 4. We see Jesus receiving the scrolls of God's salvation plan with his creation in chapter 5. And as Jesus comes and he unfolds those scrolls, so he reveals and opens up God's kingdom rule. And he calls the nations to repentance before the great day of judgment. In the third, third section, in chapter 17 to 20, the third thing that the Spirit shows John is the true nature of the world. And John likens the world to the seductive Babylon and her power-hungry beast in chapter 17. John also predicts the fall and the judgment of the natural things and all who follow her. And finally, we get to chapter 21 and 22, which is the grand finale. And that's captured in verse 5 of chapter 21. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. So let's just take a few moments to look at some insights from chapter 21 and 22. These two chapters are the hope givers. They mirror Genesis 1 and 2. You see what begins in a garden ends in a city. They speak of the renewed creation that was found once in Eden with all the beauty and the peace. And John prophesies that this will be reestablished and the faithful will be rewarded. The whole Bible story is bookended by Genesis 1 and 2 and Revelations 21 and 22. Everything between these two ends is God's magnificent redemptive story moving his kingdom forwards and man's free will response of obedience to God's advancing kingdom. You know this, the kingdom is always advancing and it culminates in this picture which is found in these two magnificent chapters, chapter 21 and 22. And so when the present seems fuzzy to you, keep your heart set on the end. As long as you are moving in that direction, you will be victorious. The last thing the Spirit shows John is God's new creation, this huge marriage between heaven and earth. The new Jerusalem comes down to earth. We are not raptured out of this earth. God has always been into redeeming and restoring people and creation. All evil is finally destroyed and creation is renewed as it was in Eden, but this time in a city. And John goes on to prophesy that God's image and rulership will be restored in mankind. John is comforted that the pain and the sorrow, the suffering and the death that marks our existence on earth will be no more. Because, as it says in Revelations 5, I make all things new. The faithful are richly rewarded and the perverse are judged. 
John's prophecy is stirring hope to people. He was looking to the people of the time under persecution, wanting to give up their faith. And he was saying, don't do that. Keep hope. Keep your focus on the end. Our tears, our suffering, our sorrow are short-lived. Only eternity is forever. And furthermore, he goes on to say that every time we overcome our temptations of sin and terror, it doesn't go unnoticed. Our brief endurance of hardship secures our eternal rewards. So hold on to Christ's promises. You will inherit his kingdom and receive his rewards. Here are four points of how you can apply this section, chapter 21 and 22, to your life today. Number one, this is not forever. Only eternity is forever. And this is John's core message in this passage to his people. Lockdown is not forever, nor is COVID-19 forever, nor is economic disruptiveness. Yes, there is pain, there is difficulty, there is confusion ahead, but it is not forever. And John is stirring hope and the, and, and, and the prophecy of renewal. And it's the same for us today. A view of eternity stirs hope and a prophecy of renewal. God is making all things new. And if not in this life, then certainly in eternity. The second thing you can apply to your life is this. This is a prophetic encouragement. These words, this is not forever, is directed to you today. And whenever you find a prophetic encouragement, you must declare it over yourself. Declare it over your work life. Say, make it as a declaration. What we are going through is not forever. And so guard your thought life in this phase. Those who come out strong from lockdown will be those who focus on the declaration of Revelation 21 verse 5. I am making all things new. And the third thing you can take from this passage is a truth that you find throughout the New Testament. The kingdom of God is here, but it is not fully here yet. You see, in Jesus, the authority that was given to man by God and then lost in Eden is taken back by Jesus from Satan and given back to man. And so, yes, we have authority to bring heaven to earth in our words and our actions. And that's why we pray the Lord's Prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this authority changes your prayer life. It changes your attitude towards work. It changes your attitude towards society and relationships. We are here to bring God's kingdom to earth. You have purpose and authority even in lockdown. Take time to reflect on this, especially in your work context. Reset your work life to bring God's kingdom into your work endeavors. Make your life about restoring God's kingdom to earth. That's what we read in Matthew 6.33. And how can this look for you? And the fourth and final thing that we can apply to our lives from this section is what you believe about the end will determine how you live in the present. John tells us that the end is magnificent and it's worth living for. It's worth waiting for. And if you can see this picture and if you're prepared to live for it and wait for it, it makes it possible for you to be faithful and strong in the face of complexities and the struggles of this earth. This will not last forever. Stay resolute. Stay strong. The best is still ahead. Today in your cell group, we're going to look at this incredible passage from Revelation 21 verses 1 to 5. Take time to read it carefully. Take time to think it through. But most of all, take time to draw from it encouragement, some practical steps of commitment and obedience that can work deep into your heart that in this season, God is making all things new. Music.